Howdy y'all, Chris here. Um, to answer a question that keeps coming up over and over, I am actually together with Mike. Hey guys, good to see you. We were, we were actually just uh, having a build night and getting inventory organized and all the other stuff to get BlamCon back on track and progress the progress, progress the progress, progress the project forward. When a question has come up multiple times has come up and I don't think I've ever provided a satisfactory explanation. So I thought I'd just do off the cuff video and do it since it would be way too much to type out. And that is why are we using two up two down sensor configuration rather than one on each edge, which is also very, very popular. So um, this is actually a diagram I did very early in the project. Um, and it was part of when I was working out what would be the best configuration for BlamCon. And this configuration has a numerous uh, set of advantages that I'd like to quickly tell you about. First off, this is the other configuration I am talking about here. This is, uh, uh, call this a diamond or crosshair configuration where it's at the edges of the screen. And then the configuration we've gone with, we call the quad, which is two up and two down. The first reason to go with this configuration is accessibility. Uh, Blamcon's all about DIY, being able to source yourself, and IR emitters are not that easy to come by unless you build them yourself or get them from us or wherever, but they are if you're using Nintendo Wii bars. Nintendo Wii bars, yes, it's only set up for a simple one, like is one bar with two points, but you can take two Two of those slap one in the top of your TV and voila, you got yourself some BlamCon sensors. So off you go. Secondarily, um, centering, you know, the BlamCon bars are uh, just single bar with two LED points. So you add a bar on the top and the bottom, you center two bars, boom, you got yourself four aligned LED points. On top of that, you only need two adhesion points. We have a system to mount it on the top very easily that's coming out very soon along with the 3D models. But also you can just take some double-sided tape. You can use magnets. The system we've got actually is magnetic. It uses uh, M-Lock, uh, not M-Lock, oh geez, what's that called? The uh, the 3M one where it's like Uber Velcro. It'll come to me in a bit. But regardless, it's very easy to mount uh, these two sets very centered, whereas when you you have to do this you got to center them up here and here and here and here and you need four adhesion points instead of two there is another reason to do this and that is tracking so um let's look at some diagrams here oh actually you know what this is actually works because I can wheel it around here. So these uh, projects are pretty much all using IR positional cameras, specifically the Sen 0158 IR positional camera uh, used to be offered by a few people, but this uh, the Sen specifically is one offered by DF Robot. It is a four point IR positional tracking camera. It has a visible light filter. All it really sees is infrared. That is why we use infrared emitters. That way it doesn't conflict with what's on the TV and the uh, light gun can then figure out where it is in 3D space. How does it do that? Well, in 3D modeling, you have two basic shapes, a tri and a quad poly. This actually is a bit of both because you can see a tri poly, tri poly, tri, tri, and then the whole thing within itself makes a quad. The quad is the best way to do it, the four point tracking, which is why it is a four point tracking camera. And then you got to say, okay, this camera isn't staying still. You're jumping around and moving with it. So you need to track it on your TV. So this is an overlay of the TV again, and an overlay of both sensor sets. So in order to get very accurate tracking it's designed to track on four points it can track on three points but it can also track on two points craig's actually written some pretty incredible algorithms to track very accurately across two points using predictive tracking basically when you go off to the left or the right or up or down and you only see two points at that time it'll calculate the direction you're moving and gets you some pretty darn accurate tracking actually a lot of the ir light gun systems within themselves use only two point tracking including the Wii itself. Uh, the, the big positive of that is simplicity, right? So you're like, hey, why didn't you go with two points? It seems to make sense. Well, the reason for that is like, check this out, okay? Oh, uh, first I'll let you know, on those two point systems, you calibrate to a particular spot and then you don't move from that spot a little bit, but this is why. So watch the distance from these two points. Let me move backwards. You see how they're getting further and further away. The camera only really cares about the distance. It doesn't care about much else as long as it sees them. So that gets you further and further away. Now let me rotate this. 
you see how they're getting closer and closer together? Oh, I should have said when you move further and further away, they're getting closer and closer together as well. The camera does not differentiate between going left or right and going further and closer, which means you lose your point of aim. You really need these other points for accuracy. Now you got to say, okay, I'm going to move around. And see at this point, we're going to use this screen sort of that you're seeing here as what the camera sees, right? So the camera is actually a lot more square than this. So here, let me throw on boop. Okay. So this is a square tracking. So let me move around and you see here, I see two points. I see two points. Let me throw on the other one. Whoa, boop. Oh, hold on. I'm getting all confused here. I want this one on and this one off. Ah, I did it the other way around again. Sorry, I'm very, very tired right now. There we go. It's the point they were highlighted. So now you see here, you see three points, see three points. This is great. But now watch what happens when I go off further. I only have one point. I've lost tracking. Let me turn on this. Boom. I still have tracking all the way down to the bottom. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm losing it. I see a slightly different screen than you do. All the way down to the bottom. There we go. I got to look at the uh, OBS monitor, not this. Now, let me go to the side. I've lost one point already, so I'm down to three points, which is still pretty accurate. Now, I've lost two points on the Blamcon. But, uh, and I, hold on. Let me, is that obvious? Yeah. See, I've got three points here. I got um, two points here. So, we're still using predictive tracking at this point. But look at this. As soon as I cross this middle line, I still have tracking and accurate tracking on the Blamcon all the way over here. Let me turn this on. So you see the area in which you can accurately track two points is very important in Blamcon with predictive tracking as well as the tracking on all four points. So using that two point rule, the area you can track is much, much larger using uh, this quad configuration than using this crosshair configuration. That's not to invalid, invalidate the crosshair configuration. To be honest, you, in some directions, whoa, I'm getting my camera a little skewed here. You can see three points for longer on this one, but with predictive tracking, you can see two points for longer as well. So the reason we went with this configuration is number one, accessibility. It allows you to just use two Wii bars, two singular bars, which are very easy to set up in center since they're a single unit. And it, it just gives you more options. Whereas um, this one is still a very valid configuration and we will support it. We actually do support it, but it is a beta support. So if you have this configuration and you go Blamcon, you're like, oh, it's not very great tracking. It actually, sorry, we just had a tester who said it's pretty good tracking. We are working on making this better, but we are focusing on this configuration. And the reason for that is exactly as I said, it is more accessible, it is easier to use, and um, it's just better for what we have and through our testing. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. And um, oh, hold on, Whoop. go back to me. And yeah, that is why we use what we use. Mike, any questions? I have no questions. I'm sure lots of people do, but uh, yeah, looks good. All right, man. So, oh, you only see about a third of a mic there. There's a <laughs> the whole mic. All right, I'll move over. I'm hogging the camera. Um, so yeah, man, um, and everybody out there, if you have any questions about that, just let me know. There is a very valid reason for both configurations. They're great. What is not great is only two. Um, but hopefully you can see that this is a superior choice to go with to start with. We are adding this configuration and there are more configurations that we will be adding later, but, um, you know, one step at a time. Blamcon's in early days. Whoa. Blamcon's in early days and, uh, you know, coming soon, yo. Oh, that was terrible. Whatever. 